Howdy, AP Precal. It's Ms. Kosh. Uh, today's topic in AP Precal is a statistics topic. So I talked to one of our statistics experts on campus, and he, Dr. J, and he pointed me in the direction of this. Uh, it's called Skew the Script or whatever. Um, so I'm using part of one of their slideshows because I think it does a really good job to, of introducing the, the topic. So I'm going to make one video where I work through um, the slideshow and then a video where I show you how to do it on the calculator. Okay, so um, when we start talking about residuals, um, the residuals is the actual value versus the predict uh, minus the predicted value. So if you remember, we've been doing lots of regressions. We've been doing linear regressions. We've done quadratic re regressions. We've done exponential regressions. Uh, I think we did a cubic regression. Um, but basically, is what happens is if you, once you'd come up with that regression equation, you can see what it would be at a particular time, and then you can we, the, what would be the value on your trend line. Um, well, regression equation, um, versus what was it actually at that particular time. So you subtract those, and that gives you the residual. So here, here we go. So say they've got the, um, this case is the percent of days, percent of school days attended compared to the star test. Okay. Um, so notice as you are there at school more often, your grades go up, but the, the values are also above and below the line. So what we'll do is we'll look to see, okay, are you above the line? Are you below the line? How much? Um, I'm not sure what the boxes are supposed to be. Okay, but what happens, okay, so that we can make a prediction. A new student comes to school. At his old school, his attendance was 80%. If his attendance stays the same, what is his predicted value? So what we notice here is that when x is equal to 80, 80% 80 of the time he's there, the value on that line ends up being, well, we plug that into x, and it's about 37.9 on his test. Okay. But what actually happened, he actually got 44 questions correct. Oh, this was 37.9 questions correct. Okay, whatever. Um, so there is his actual value versus what was it? There's his actual value is at 44 and versus his expected value at 37.91. And so that difference right there is that little orange segment, and that's the residual. Okay, so the actual minus the predicted gives us the residual. So in this case, it's 44 minus 37.91, and so the residual here is 6.09. Okay, his actual test score was 6.09 points higher than our model predicted. So we, we make this prediction based, based on good data, but then things don't always live up to that or don't always follow that rule. Um, okay, so a residual is positive if it's higher than the model's prediction. If the actual value is higher than the model's prediction, it's negative if it's lower. Okay, and so then what we'll do is we'll take this scatter plot, do the regression, and then we'll use that to make the residual plot. So you'll notice the x values are the same, but the, res the y values are different. On the residual, in the middle there, we'll ha we're going to have zero. And so that would be if the predicted and the, um, and the actual are exactly the same, their difference would be zero. Um, and so here's a positive residual, so then they come in here. And there's the positive residual where they went up to four. And so the next ones, one of them was at positive one, the other one was at um, negative four or something like that. Or negative three and a half, okay, whatever. And so they start plotting all these points and finding them. Um, and so we can see how that, how those, um, how far these different points are off of the trend line, basically is what we've kind of, we, we've kind of, reconfigured our graph here. I don't teach stats. I'm doing the best I can. Okay. So the residual plot, it's centered at zero. Um, when there is no pattern, um, that's a good thing. When it looks random, that's good. Okay. So if they are, the, if the dots are randomly scattered on the residual plot, that means that the, the equation that we came up with was a good, a uh, good fit model. Um, it captured the trend leaving only random and noisy residuals. So things are kind of all over the place. There wasn't a pattern or a trend to it. However, let's say we have something that looks like this. You might notice it doesn't quite look linear, but if we do a linear regression, we can then do our residual plot, and we find that the residual plot has a pattern, and so this one is a bad fit. So in this case, we would not do a, we wouldn't use a linear 
um, equation for this, this graph um, because the, the residual plot follows a particular pattern. Um, there is a curved trend in the data that our linear model didn't fully capture. Oh, that's a great way to say it. Good job, Screw, skew the script. Okay, um, now this is a problem that came from the AP world, and I want to, um, to use this one on paper and show you with my calculator. So hopefully that was helpful. We kind of got a good foundation of it. I'm I intend to work through this in class with you, um, but yeah, let me know how we do with this. AP stats is not my forte. Um, but we're doing the best we can. Here we go.